welcome to the kitchen at Westminster. This week for saving time, we are doing a baked white fish and scalloped potatoes. Comfort food at its best. Scalloped, scalloped potatoes, you can't go wrong. Everybody likes them. You add cheese, even better. <laughs> and no frills. This week at no frills. So you can get a pack of frozen fillets. You get four individually frozen fillets and that's ideal for people who live alone or you're just two because then you can just take out as many as you want it's easy really really economical that way 597 10 pounds of potatoes a dollar 87 are you seriously 10 pounds what do you buy 10 pounds of for under two dollars that's it's it's hard to imagine cheese because we need it for our fish and the potatoes and Fish was, our cheese, sorry. Cheese was $4.97. Tomatoes, look at them, they're beautiful, nice and firm, so that's good because when you slice them, if they're getting overripe, it's hard to slice. $1.97 a pound, some green onions because the color's going to be good. If you've got some storage onions on hand, perfectly fine. I chose the green because it's gonna dress up our fish and look really nice on the plate. Under a dollar for the bundle. And evaporated milk. I like using evaporated milk for scalloped potatoes. It never separates. How many times have you had scalloped potatoes where you take a scoop out and the milk is kind of, it almost looks curdled, but it separates. If you use evaporated milk, it's not going to happen. So all of this slightly over our $15 mark this week, we're at $16. When I say slightly, I mean slightly, a buck over. And you know what? If you have some onions at home, there's your extra dollar right there. So, or maybe you'll already have some potatoes. Either way, $16 easily. Four pieces of fish, nice big pan of scalloped potatoes. This is a good meal it's at $4 a plate, even still. This is a no brainer. Let's get busy. I want you to start preheating your oven to 375. That's where we're going to cook everything tonight. We are going to go slightly over the hour because the potatoes will be in the oven for an hour still very low maintenance in the hour they're in the oven you're going to have tons of time to do a bunch of errands around the house sit down and watch a tv show whatever it is you want to do you're going to have time to do it let's get busy right now the time that it takes us to get these potatoes in the oven is how far over the hour we're going to go i really think we can do it in like 10 minutes as always i've got my compost bowl ready to go now I'm doing for four, so I've got one, two, three, four, five, six potatoes here. As we get them, I, I mean, you want four or five cups of sliced. I'm gonna go with this many because I want lots. I, I want it to be a nice hearty meal for us. So we're just gonna peel them first and get them out of the way. These are nice russets, which bake up really nice. And at this price, my goodness, if you're doing dinner for Easter, come on, 10 pounds of potatoes for under $2. It's a no brainer. Now, these sales will go until next Wednesday, so that's March 31st. You've got lots of time to get over there and get them. Lots of time. And, whoops, I'm already making a mess. This is scalloped potatoes. You know what? I have messed around with scalloped potatoes over the years. I'm still not convinced that mine are as good as my mother-in-law's. However, <laughs> I'm finally satisfied. Holy mackerel, I think I'd better move my bowl. I know, tough talk, right? Um, so regardless, I really think that the secret to, to scalloped potatoes, I prefer a long and slow cook. If you, some recipes are gonna tell you go like half an hour at 450 or something like that, I find not the same. You want the, low and sl the lower and slower. And an hour, no big deal. Nicest thing ever if you're having ham, fish, anything like that it's just they're good i mean really who doesn't like them no one i know <laughs> we're gonna get this all done and i'm already preheating i say 375 easy easy and this is we'll have to give these a little rinse because they're russets then you know when you buy red potatoes or white potatoes they're kind of scrubbed up clean russets not so much they've still got some some, some garden left on them. So we'll just give them a rinse when we're all done. And there's that. And we're gonna use just the white parts of the green onions in our potatoes, and then we'll use the green parts for the fish. Now, I should say, if you have or feel like 
<clears throat> going in an extra couple of bucks and getting some spinach. When it comes time to cook the fish, if you cook it on a bed of spinach when you bake it, oh, it looks beautiful when you bring it to the table. So if you have it and you feel like using it, it's a nice little addition, absolutely unnecessary. It's really just, it looks really nice. So if you were having company over and you want it to put a wow factor when you bring it to the table, on the bed of spinach is lovely. And it won't be long until it's growing in our gardens in Ontario. So even better, right? Because you'll have so much of it and you'll be wanting to use it in everything. And lately when I'm coming to work, I see crocuses coming up in gardens, the sunny ones. It's a good sign, things are coming along. Won't be long until we've got rhubarb. Oh, come on, one of my favorite treats, right? We might have to include a dessert when the rhubarb comes in. We might, might, might just have to go a little over our hour and include a rhubarb dessert because first thing in Ontario, you can't, I mean, if you want to eat it just because it's the first thing that's fresh. And there we go. We're getting through them all. I'm doing lots here, but like I say, I feel like I want to make a good full pan for the family that we're feeding this forward to. As always, our, our, our supply, our grocery store feature has provided the groceries free of charge to us for a demonstration. And we we moved that forward by donating the meal to a family here in Orangeville. So I want a nice full pan of potatoes to go there. And there we are. Now, so that, I was really making a mess today. <laughs> now we'll just do that. I'm gonna take these potatoes just over to the sink and give them a quick little rinse. And then we'll cut them up and be ready to go. Just. I just want to give them just a little bit, just to get rid of any of that. There we go. Sometimes that jumps back and hits me, and I'm hoping it's not going to happen on camera. Because, you know, it's, it's I, I need my dignity. So there we are. We've got our potatoes already. Now, scalloped potatoes, we want to slice them thin. So we're thinking eighth of an inch. We often go quarter of an inch. We're going eighth today. So I don't want anybody to get hurt, but let's get busy. So I find the nicest way to do it is if you cut them in half and then, then they'll lay flat. And then you're not struggling with holding them still at least. And then eighth of an inch. So if you have a mandolin, by all means use it. I'm a little afraid of them, to be honest. You slide your hand down and it, it feels more dangerous than cutting. You're going to know for yourself. Some people swear by them. Every time I use one, I'm sure I'm gonna get my knuckles. So you can see I'm getting a nice thin slice here. And this is so they'll cook. If you go thicker, you're not gonna cook them in the time we need them to. As always, the size of the, of the vegetable is how long it takes to cook. And again, in half, and then just eighth of an inch. Now eighth of an inch, if we say my finger's a quarter of an inch, probably, probably the band of my ring is pushing eighth of an inch or thereabouts. And basically cut them as thin as you feel safe doing. <laughs> and a fork at the end will tell you whether or not they're done. So there we go. For heaven's sakes, don't hurt yourself. And I won't, because that would also be really embarrassing on camera. There we go. And I think poor Shannon would have a fit. And why should she keep filming or not? Probably, you know what? She's saying yes, and absolutely, by all means, there would be some, some comedy initially. <laughs> and there's another one done. And we're gonna be through them in no time at all. I, sh I didn't really pay attention exactly to what time it was when we started, but like I say, I think as soon as these go in the oven, we're dead on an hour. So this and the rest of it is going to go super easy. Not much you can do about cutting up potatoes. It's what it is. Try to remember to do this though about cutting them in half and then leaving them flat on the on the cutting board so that you don't have to um, struggle with the curve because that's just making it harder than it needs to be. And there we go. 
we're, there's only one left in the pen. Now, if you're feeding four people, I would say four to five medium-sized potatoes, if you like to measure four people, you're gonna want four cups at least of sliced potatoes. So if you were trying to be exact, then you could get a measuring cup out. The other thing to think about, and what I often do for things like scalloped potatoes, is I, I, I think about, well, what size pan is going to do? If it's two people, I might use like a, a two-quart dish or something. And then you're just kind of thinking, I want two layers, so how many potatoes is it gonna take? And if you keep your dish handy beside you, you can really see how they're coming along to fill it up. And there we go. This is it. Look how nice those are. Nice and even, and as always, the trick is to keep them even. Even one thick one, and you're not gonna bake up evenly. We'll set that out of the way. I'll wipe that off. And now our onions. And as I said, I just want to use the white part in this. I'm going to take those ends off in one, one quick cut. There they all are. And they can go in the waste pile. And have a little feel. If there's any bits that seem to want to come off, rub them off a little bit. They seem pretty good. And now, just on an angle and cutting just like that and again if you have a storage onion on hand by all means cut it up and throw it in you want nice little pieces is the secret nice little pieces and we're almost to the tops of the white parts there we go we're going to save that and use all that green on top of our fish later can go right there for now that's for waste that's for waste now this big pan is what I'm going to use I put foil around the sides because as they bake the milk will splash and you know what I find it harder to scrub the sides than I do the bottom so only the sides have foil on them if you're using a Pyrex or a ceramic dish I wouldn't even bother with the foil it's not that hard you can really scrub them these pans they get all scratched when you scrub Got a couple packs of butter. Just if margarine's what you have and prefer to use, then by all means use it. I'm not a fan of the sprays, but if that's what you like, again, go ahead. And I like using butter because it cooks into the food then, and that's what I want, right? I, I want the good taste of the butter. So I'm just doing that. I'll put a little bit on the sides where I've got the foil but just just a little so that when I go to serve them later it comes out nice and easily for me and there we go that's it clean up <laughs> okay now we need cheese potatoes onions family I'm sending this to has a gluten-free diet so I'm using cornstarch it says flour on there Flour is what I would usually use. Cornstarch is a great option if you're keeping it gluten-free. And salt and pepper. And we can start with that. All we're going to do is layer. So we want, and you can be really particular and layer them in beautifully if you want to, or you can just kind of start laying them in and know that when you serve them, it's gonna look nice no matter what. And we want one good layer. And we can come back and go in the other direction to fill the empty spots. And we're just gonna make sure that we get one full layer, but we wanna make sure that we also, see that one's too thick. Smear, sneaky one, sneaky one. That would have been trouble, trouble later for me. I'm, I'm trying to think if I have half or not here. I'm. I'm I think I'm getting pretty near to half. Want one good layer, right to the edge if you can. And if you've got any little spots, just tuck in the smallest pieces of, of potato to fill it all in. Okay, I think that probably looks pretty good. What do you, yes, looks good, I think so. Now, take about half of your onion. We want two layers. You don't need to get too bent about, is it half exactly? Just think in terms of half. 
and just like that. And we'll go a little bit more. There, I'm gonna say that's half. Now I want, I've got two tablespoons. I'm gonna use one tablespoon of the cornstarch and just, just mess it around so that it goes all over just like that. And then we'll go a little salt and pepper. We've got salt. I'm gonna go a little bit more. If you're using a shaker, just make sure, like imagine that it's going everywhere. And then some pepper. Look how easy this is. And now some cheese. Now you can absolutely make your scalloped potatoes without cheese, but I love it. And I'm using cheddar. Feel free to use whatever cheese is the nicest compliment. We're going to use cheddar on the fish, so it just makes sense to do it this way. But if you were having ham, maybe you'd like a nice Swiss cheese in there. Honestly, it doesn't matter. So just like that, even if what you have is Parmesan, if you wanna just do a few shakes of Parmesan cheese in there, you don't have to get too worried about what kind you use. And we want it to, you wanna imagine that there's gonna be cheese in every bite. Now we do it all again. Here we go. Potatoes all the way through. All the way through. Just like that. And you're just layering them again. You're just trying to get a second layer. Same as before. If there's smaller ones, maybe save them for fitting in at the end. And if you notice any any that are too thick, then give them a cut now. Don't, don't think to yourself, oh, it'll be all right. It won't be. Somebody will bite into one potato that is going to be a lot harder than any other. Don't imagine, it'll be all right. We've all done that, okay? Don't do it anymore. You know it's not going to be. We'll come back. See, that one feels thick. It was the end, so I was probably worried about my finger. <laughs> Gee, there's another one. I don't know what's going on there. Holy mackerel. Okay, shoddy workmanship. And look at that. See how this pan, like, I guessed really well because I just kind of eyeballed it and thought, okay, I want to fill this pan. So we've got two good layers. And now the onion again. And some of you might be thinking, you said only the whites and there's green there, but it, it's the firm part. Like the, the rest of it is the tops, the onion tops. So maybe that's what I should have said to be plainer instead of promising whites and then having green. <laughs> anyway, it looks nice. Now again, with the second tablespoon of flour or cornstarch, whatever you're using, I'm gonna go a little bit more over there. I think I just got it on my apron. I'm gonna pretend that's not a problem. <laughs> it probably doesn't need to be. And now again with the salt and pepper, just like that. And our pepper. Mm -hmm. Just like that, there we go. Cheese again. So it's the same two layers potato, onion, flour, or cornstarch, salt and pepper, cheese. And just like that, look at this. This is coming together pretty quick. And then honestly, it'll take us like two minutes to put the, maybe five, to put the, <laughs> to put the fish together. And then we're just gonna be sitting back waiting for it to come out of the oven. That's all ready. Evaporated milk and actually, because I'm doing a big pan, and you're gonna know for yourself, it'll be a visual. I've got just a half a cup of cream here, just in case I decide it looks like it needs more. And you can buy the 2% evaporated milk. I want it the full fat, so I didn't. Uh, they start with a homogenized milk, I think, for this. There we go, finally. That was looking exciting for me, wasn't it? Oh, for heaven's sakes. There we go. Got it. Dodged a bullet. Okay. And just pour it, and you just want to get all the way around. So I usually just kind of go all the way around the outside and then back and forth and kind of look. So make sure that you're getting all the bits where you can see the flour. And the flour is there just to help it thicken up. 
gonna get a little bit of moisture out of our cheese and potatoes. So we're just doing that. And then again, I've got half a cup. This is a big pan. If you're using like a square eight inch pan, no way you're gonna need the extra. I'm just doing it just to be safe. I wanna make sure that, they're, that they're, there's still some sauce there for us. And now, earlier, I've got two tablespoons of butter here and I cut it up into little bits and you just wanna spread them around. That's it, just like that. And the butter helps to set it and it's delicious flavor. So there we go, just like that. Our potatoes are oven ready. We're gonna cover them with foil. That's to stop them from browning up too quickly and also to help them not dry out. They're gonna be in there for a while. Let's cover it with foil. Oven ready, this is ready. That was so easy, honestly. I'm so good at it now, I love that. And here we go, into the oven. I'm gonna go middle and I'm gonna leave room for the fish to go beside. And there we go, set the timer for 45 minutes. I've got 45 on mine, I'm push and go. Now, I think we should go ahead and get the fish ready right now and then we can sit down. <laughs> and how nice would that be for the fish? You've got whatever pan you've got, Pyrex, whatever kind of pan you're using. I'm doing four fillets, so I chose a pan that I can lay them out in. You're going to decide. You just need one big enough to house however many you're doing. And again, butter the bottom of your pan, butter for flavor, something. I, I, and I really think on this case, I wouldn't go parchment, okay? I want you to use butter or margarine or something underneath of it. It's not gonna stick and make a mess. It's not gonna be a messy pan to clean. So the added taste of the butter is what we want. There's a paper towel for all my butter fingers here. And I'm just gonna do that. A little bit of that. Okay, now, if you have, whoops, if you have spinach, this is where I would say lay the spinach in there and just lay it in and make a whole bed out of it. In our case, we're just gonna start laying in the fillets and try to get them so that they're not overlapping each other. So that worked out great, just like that. This is so easy and so delicious. Tomato. My fillets were still frozen, perfectly fine. It won't matter. And especially, it's gonna be a while before we put them in, 45 minutes. They're just gonna sit. We'll set them in the fridge and let them come around however they want to. Now, depending on how many fillets you have, what we want is to get a good slice or two of tomato on top of each. So, pick a nice firm tomato so it's easy to slice. <laughs> and there, and I'm gonna go one each and we'll see where, we are, where we're at if I need more. Look how nice they are. Oh, I'm gonna need a couple more, I think. And there, look at how nice this is, I promise you. Now imagine with the bed of spinach, and that's what I mean about the wow factor when you take it to the table then, so pretty. And I need at least two more, I think. One, and there. At first I thought I might need two tomatoes, and then when I saw how nice and big they were, one is plenty, and it is. Now, I want to do salt and pepper. So, just, I put my hands on that fish and tomato, so we don't need me reaching in there like that. There's that. So we've done salt, and now we'll do a shake of pepper. And you're looking for some good color on your tomato. There you go, just like that. More cheese. And you wanna put the cheese on the tomato. So, just like that. Now, can you already imagine how pretty this is gonna be on the plates later? Isn't it pretty? And look how easy it is. This is a great kind of company coming over meal that's zero fuss, 
and looks like a big deal. It really makes you look like you know what you're doing in the kitchen and serve it up with scalloped potatoes like we are, rice, even just a, a whole pile of veggies would be lovely. Any way you do it, this is gonna be, packs a lot of wow factor at the table. We won't waste that little bit of cheese. Okay, so that is going to be just about ready to go. All we need now is this green onion. I'm gonna save that. So for the greens, first of all, we'll cut off the bit that was at the very top, just because sometimes the very tips dry out. Of course they do, right? Now, I like to cut green onion on an angle. So just like that. And all we're doing here is not eating the elastic. We're not eating the elastic, not today. <laughs> Sometimes that could happen in some kitchens. Not here, not today. And there we go. Okay, I think this is gonna be lots. And we're just gonna, we're, we're, it's flavor, it's beautiful color. We're just tossing it in here. Like, look at this, look how pretty it is. I don't want you to get all worried and trying to place these pieces of green onion on there. Just toss them in and make it look good and you can move them around a bit. Even if company's coming, come on, who's gonna say, oh, this looks beautiful. That's it. I'm gonna set this in the fridge. When our timer goes at 45 minutes, we're gonna add this to the oven and we're gonna take, we're gonna take the foil off of the potatoes. They'll go 15 more minutes, five minutes they need to set on the table and wait. The fish will come out, that's it. It's that easy. So in 45 minutes, we're adding the fish. Go and do something fun. I'll see you soon. 45 minutes are up. Okay, this is gonna be fun. I'm not gonna do it in here because I'm afraid of getting burned and actually I'm not loving that there. There we go, that's, wow, oh, hot dog. <laughs> Let me get hot dog literally, right? I'm gonna move this. These are not gonna work for me. I'm sorry, this is a bit of chaos, but these are not going to lift up that heavy rack and I don't fancy getting burned. So let's do it like this. And there. I just want it out of my way so I can lift up those potatoes. That is not a right. This is not going very well at all for me right now. It's a different battle. Still the oven, different battle. Here we go. Oh, these, by the way, smell so good. So right off the bat, our fish is gonna go in. I'm just gonna set it right there because we'll put the potatoes back beside it. Be careful when you lift the foil off, the steam is gonna come out. See what I mean? And that would burn you. So these are coming along nicely. Now we're gonna set them back in the oven. Those are, you know what? I'm, I'm not gonna take the foil off yet. I'm gonna wait a minute because they're, they're not wet. If they're really looking wet still, then you wanna take that off to let it evaporate a little bit in there, but they don't look overly wet. So I'm not going to do it. Don't fall victim to the game of, I'll just add some more cream. It'll separate and curdle and ruin the nice look. Just set them back in like this. Fish is in, they're in. Close it up, set your timer for 15 minutes. 15 minutes, we're gonna take the potatoes out, let them sit for a few minutes. The fish needs 20 minutes. It's gonna pan out perfectly. Go back to whatever you were doing. Maybe, you, you know what, I had forgotten to tell you, evaporated milk. It's only a buck 25 a can right now. Buy a few. One of these days, I, I fudge. You make fudge. If you've got brown sugar, evaporated milk, and some butter, you are an hour away from fudge. It's, it's that easy, it's dead easy, it's stupid good, it's all of those things. Fudge, evaporated milk, brown sugar, butter, trust me about this, we'll do it together one day. It's so much fun, it's not really fun. It's work, you've gotta beat it, it's really hard work, but it's delicious. I'm gonna show you how one day. Okay, maybe at Halloween or something. Okay, let's take a break, do whatever you're doing, wash up your prep dishes if you haven't already, set the table, 15, 20 minutes you're eating dinner. Call everybody in, get them to wash up. Okay, see you soon. That's it, we're 50, um, 15 more minutes in, and oh, oh, the fish smells really good. 
really, really good. I'm gonna take the potatoes out and the fish needs five more minutes and the potatoes are best if they're left cool, like that. I'm just gonna set my timer quickly for five more minutes. The potatoes are best if we let them sit for five to 10 minutes. It just gives them, a, I don't, they're, they're better and trust me on that one. This whole meal, look at how easy this was. We finished prepping a long time ago. Kitchen's clean. All we have left to do really is eat. Dead easy meal. Okay, five minutes, I'm gonna see you again. We're gonna plate it okay, up. Okay, that's it. Fish is coming out and, oh my goodness, it smells good. And, oh, hot dog. Okay, look at that. Oh, it's pretty. Now, I'm just going to, with a fork, just make sure, look how nice that is. See how that just, with the fork just breaks apart. That's what you're looking for. That's how we know it's done. And I didn't do it on camera and I'm sorry, I, I should have for the potatoes. And again, be super careful about that steam. And you just want, you want them to be fork tender and they are, okay? Just like that. Everything's done. This is beautiful. Supper is ready. I know that we were a little over an hour this week. I think it was well worth it. And let's face it, most of the time it was just in the oven. Really, we weren't working for an hour by any stretch of the imagination. Active time, what were we, 20 minutes doing the prep on the potatoes, five minutes maybe on the fish. That's nothing to complain about. I'm gonna plate one up so we can see how nice it looks, but look at this, look at the pretty fish. Okay, and just lifts out beautifully because we buttered it. I'm using a slotted lifter because sometimes fish accumulate some, some moisture there and the tomatoes as well. So just if you use a slotted one, you just get rid of it as it comes out. So pretty, so pretty. And over here, we'll get some potatoes on here and just scoop some off. tons like if you think this is four people look at that plate full of food let's go one more there we go look at how nice this is now if we remember I was feeling badly about going a dollar over that's a four dollar meal four dollars I don't even know what you can buy for four dollars a bagel I, I don't even know honestly I don't know you don't buy that nowhere except your own kitchen okay so keep cooking Quit letting food eat up all your time and money. You can do this in an hour for very little money. Quit throwing it away. Let Bring your kitchen into the game. Do the work, it's not that much. We sat down, we watched television, we did all sorts of things while we were cooking this dinner. And it's beautiful. Your family is going to be so happy tonight. Get to the store by Wednesday of next week, so that's the 31st. Take advantage of these really good deals. Just look after your family, look after your food, eat well, compost a lot. Don't forget, like the video when you watch it and please hit subscribe and hit the little bell thing so you're notified when the next video comes out each week. Take good care. Bye.